Mathematical Literacy Paper 1, we are going to do an overview of the question paper. Remember, the question paper, Paper 1, consists of 150 marks, and those 150 marks are broken down into um, subsections. In Paper 1, you'll be asked questions that are on Level 1 and Level 2. Remember, the levels of difficulty, they range from level 1 to level 4, but in paper 1, you'll be only concentrating on level 1 and level 2 questions, which means they are less complicated, which is level 1, and a bit challenging, level 4. So you will get level 4 questions in paper 2, not that much, only level 2, 3, and 4 in paper 2, but in paper 1, it will be level 1 and level 2. You will be asked questions whereby you need to recall some information and apply one or two skills. It won't be like the combination of different skills, understanding and the skill. You will be asked a question whereby you need to recall a certain theory, questions such as on percentages. You will be asked maybe to calculate a certain percentage and then you need to do that and apply a particular skill. The first question, like in question one, paper one, you'll be asked questions based on calculation skills. And all of the learners, you should use a calculator, preferably the natural display calculator. The calculation skills that will be asked, they, you'll be asked questions ranging from ratios. You'll be asked another questions based on uh, uh, increasing and decreasing quantities. Questions on graphs, remember you'll be asked questions either to sketch them or those graphs would be sketched for you. If the graphs are sketched for you, which means you need to interpret or to read from the graphs. There are different types of graphs, of course. There is a pie graph that you should know, the histogram, the compound bar graph, and the line graphs. You'll also be asked questions based on tables. The tables will be given to you with some values and other values would be unknown. Whereby you can charge a pattern to find the unknown or you can do the calculation to find the unknown. Let's make an example with the table that I'm talking about. I think most of us would be familiar with these types of tables. The tables might have values. Uh, these values, this one is unknown. Right, there we are. We've got a table here with 48 to 120, C it's unknown, 200, B it's unknown. Here we've got 12, 15, D it's unknown, we've got 21, 24, 27. Now you'll be asked maybe to complete this table. This table must be, will be based on a specific context. Context meaning this might represent something, might be representing, for instance, bags of oranges. This corresponds with 40, this corresponds with 80, this corresponds with 120, and so on. Judging from this, I can see a specific pattern. That from 4, it was 80, 120, so it is clear that it's increasing by 40. So you need to follow that pattern of which this value here would definitely be 160. And then you move on in that pattern, and then that B would be 240. And then you also need to calculate D. Those are the types of tables that I'm talking about. Remember, from these tables, again, they might carry on by asking you certain questions. You can represent this table in a form of a graph. They can ask you to draw a graph representing that table. You need to complete that table, and then you represent that information on a graph. You need to understand certain terminology that is used in statistics. Because you'll be asked questions based on the mean. Now, if you don't understand what the mean is, it will be difficult for you to answer the question. 
I think a mean, it's known that it's an average. We'll quickly maybe look at a, a, a classroom maybe consi uh, consisting of three learners. Now, three learners would be like learner A, B, C. Learner A, B, C. Learner A, they wrote a test, got 31 marks out of 50. Learner B got 42 out of 50. Learner C got 15 out of 50. Now, based on these numbers, you'll be asked questions such as calculate the mean of these scores. You see, it is important to understand now what the mean is and the mean is the average. And how do we calculate the average? We add all these numbers and divide by the number of learners that wrote, which is three in this case. So we add this one and that one and that one. So basically we are getting 88. I think so. Yes, it's... Um, 46 plus 42, then it's 88. So this is the total number of scores when I add them. And when I'm asked the mean, I need to divide this 88 by 3. Then dividing 88 by 3, this is what we are getting, 29.3, if I round it off to one decimal place. It's 29.3. That is the mean score of these three marks. We also be asked questions based on the mode, and you need to learn these terminologies like mode. Mode, it's the item appearing most. If maybe there were about four learners and another one got 31, then the mode of that would be the 31, because that's the number that is appearing most often. You'll be asked questions on the median, so it is important to go back again and learn the meaning of these terms. Range, because once you understand what the range is, they say the range is the highest score subtract the lowest. So if you didn't understand what the range is, definitely you won't answer that question. And the question is very easy. Calculate the range of these scores. Then you take the highest score, which is 42 in this case, and then you subtract the lowest, which is 15. So it was important for all the learners to understand that the range is the highest minus the lowest. Another area again that is important, it also carries more marks, it's areas, volumes, and perimeter. Carries more, more or less about 25 marks. Um, I always emphasize that uh, it is important for the learners to master the skill of substitution because all the questions that will be asked, that requires the formulae. those formulae will always be given. So it's not important to memorize these formulas or the formulae because the formulae will be given. So yours is just to substitute, use your calculator. The next question that would be in the examination again would be a question based on locations and grid. Some of the learners, they call it map work. Um, in most cases there, there'll be a map that is given. The next section that will be asked on paper one, I think that this one will be the last section on paper one, which is probability. A probabil probability of an event to occur. There are certain um, things that you need to understand on probability. Remember, probability, it's the game of chance. Let me call it the game of chance for a certain event to occur. I'll make uh, a couple of examples pertaining to probability. Um, I've written one here which is tossing the coin. Now, tossing the coin, if I toss the coin, it might land on the head or the tail. Now, the chances of that coin landing on the head or the tail, they are both equal. It could be either the tail or the head. So the probability that it's 50% there's a 50% chance of that coin to land on a tail and another 50% of that coin to land, to land on the heads. Now, uh, why are we studying probability? Probability, it's, um, uh, it is applicable to our lives or on our daily basis. Um, the chances of today raining, that is also probability. If you watch the news, they'll also tell you that the chances 
of a rain today probably it's 30 percent which means there are lesser chances of us having a rain on that day these sections that i've emphasized uh you need to go back home and study them in your study groups at school as